The worst summer in my life. Chapter 1 schools out. Just 15 more minutes and it will all be over, for three months anyway. Today is the last day of school and man am I glad. Been a tough year with my folks complaining about my grades, friends and just about everything else I do or say. But soon I will be free and get a much needed break from school. So I thought, seems that my teachers had called my parents and told them that I failed some classes and had been ditching a lot. 3, 2, 1, ring yes time to go and live life the way I see fit. But I had no idea what was in store for me when I get home. I walked home with Jimmy and Dan talking about all the cool things we would do this summer. I simply could not wait for us to get started. We stopped at Dan's house first to drop him off and set plans for tomorrow. Jimmy and I said our goodbyes and then headed for Jimmy's house. I decided that I would hang out with Jimmy for an hour or so, despite my mom's order to come home straight after school. We played PlayStation for a while and then I left to go home, looking back I wish I had never gone back. As I walked up the drive I noticed that my dad's car was there. Odd he works till six most days and here it's only 4.30. I walked in and saw my mom and dad were in the kitchen so I started to head to my room, but that was stopped by my dad calling me into the kitchen. I was all like oh god here comes the yelling cause I was an hour late, guess I am 15 not 4. I walked in and they were both seated at the table and mom told me to sit down. I took my chair at the table and asked them why did they want me here. Dad spoke up and said, son you are in deep trouble. I said why cause I am an hour late. He said yes. And other things. Like what I said. Well son I think that somewhere we failed to bring you up the right way, you hang out with bad influences and you are not performing well in school. I am thinking to myself, oh god here comes the speech. My mom spoke up, plus you are very disrespectful to me and your father. So we have talked about it and came up with a solution. I was dumbfounded, what are you talking about? Dad spoke. First you are grounded for the whole summer. Okay I think this is the first part where I did not help myself, what the fuck do you mean I am grounded? Dad was very upset but went on, second you are to have no contact with Jim, Dan, or anyone else outside this home. I was in shock. But it gets worse. And third, you are to be re-raised this summer by your mother and I. What the hell does that mean? That is when dad got up and slapped my face. It hurt and I just sat there in shock, dad has never hit me before and it left her impression so I decided to go along with this till I could figure a way out of it. Mom spoke up, to answer your question, you will be regressed in age till you can grow up and be a mature young adult. She went on, first you will be required to act and behave like a two-year-old. Okay it seems that mom has lost it here. And this will start now, go to your room and wait for us. But mom. Now young man. I got up and walked to my room. Thinking only of what she meant by me being a two year old. Chapter 2 The List So there I am sitting in my room waiting for mom and dad to come. So I picked up the phone and called Dan to tell him what happened. He was just as shocked as I was and said don't sweat it. They will calm down and I would be out in a few days. Just then the phone went dead. A few minutes later mom and dad came into my room mom had some things in her hand that looked like baby's things but it was hard to tell. Dad said I see that you can not be trusted so I cut the phone line to your room. Now your mother has some things here for you that will help you become a two year old again. That is when it hit me, the things that mom had were baby things, only bigger. I got scared but before I could say anything dad strapped some kind of pacifier into my mouth. Then mom began to try to take off my clothes but I jumped back. Dad then grabbed me and held me down so mom could finish. Mom spoke up, you are to wear these at all times from now on, that is when I saw she was putting a diaper on me like I was a baby. I felt so shamed. There I was a 15 year old boy being diapered like I was a 2 year old boy. She pinned the cloth diaper on me and then slipped something in my rear, then placed a pair of plastic pants on me that had a lock on the waist. When she was done I was laying on my bed in nothing but a diaper and the pacifier. 
I was in total shock and they saw this so they helped me up and led me to the spare bedroom. Walking or should I say waddling into the room I noticed that the room had been turned into a baby's nursery, only one thing was different, everything was in a much larger size. Being gagged I could not say anything. Dad said that mom and him made a list of rules that I was to follow if I ever hoped of being a teenager again. 1. You are to refer to us as mommy and daddy till we say otherwise. 2. You will speak only in baby talk, any big kid words will mean your mouth washed out with soap and the pacifier will be placed in your mouth for the rest of the day. 3. You are no longer to feed yourself except for a bottle, mom or I will spoon feed you till we feel you can handle feeding yourself again. 4. You are no longer able to bathe yourself, bathes will be given by your mother or me. 5. You are not to go into any rooms of the house where there are phones unless we are there to watch you. 6. You are not to watch any TV shows that we don't approve of. 7. You are no longer allowed to use the toilet, you are in diapers and you will use them just like a baby. Failure to meet the requirements of this list will result in punishment. Either time out in the corner or a spanking. Do you understand this list of rules? I nodded yes in sheer terror of what might happen to me. Now your mother is going to get you dressed and then it's time for dinner. Dad walks out and mom had me get up on the changing table so that she could dress me. She picked out a white playsuit with fluffy blue bunnies on them and put it on me. As mom led me downstairs I was still trying to figure out why they would do this to me. I wanted to scream but the pacifier was still strapped in. As mom led me into to the kitchen she said that there were gonna be more changes and that this was just the start. Chapter 3 Changes I walked into the kitchen and saw it, one of the changes mom spoke of. It was a high chair that was just my size. At this point all I could do is be silent mostly due to the pacifier but also from all of the things I just went through. And it was far from over, mom lifted the tray the high chair then helped me climb into it. Walking is a lot harder due to the thick diaper I am now forced to wear. Dad came over to me and said, I am now gonna remove the pacifier, for tonight unless I say otherwise you make speak like a big kid, but any back talk or use of bad words and yelling will mean a spanking and the pacifier goes back in for two days. Am I understood? I nodded my head yes. He then removed it and I was able to talk. I needed to ask why, why are they doing this to me, but I decided not afraid that they would put that pacifier back in my mouth. Mom spoke up saying, I bet you are wondering why we have decided to make you a two-year-old again. I said, yes mommy I want to know why. Well it is very simple, we got the idea from a doctor friend of your father's and we were told that not only is this perfectly legal, but recommended for someone who is out of control as yourself. So your father and I are taking the summer off to make sure that our baby boy is well taken care of. Keep in mind that it is all up to you how long you will be like this. All you must do is prove to us that you can be trusted and behave like a normal teenager, then we will let you be one again. And don't think for a second that you can drag this out and once school starts you will be a teen again. Oh no, you will be baby even at school. This was too much for me but I held it in due to I did not want a spanking. Mom went on with, also I don't like those disposable diapers so I will be putting you into cloth diapers and rubber pants. Then she started to feed me baby food. Mom and Dad finished their food and Mom started to clear the table. She went to the fridge and got me a bottle of juice for me to drink while she did the dishes. As I was sitting there I got the feeling that I had to poop. I really tried to hold it in but the thing Mom put in my rear earlier made it all come out and it filled the diaper and I wet it too. It was the most disgusting feeling I have ever felt. The wetting made it worse because it made the poop squishy and I could feel it all over my backside. I guess it smelled because mom came over and said, oh my I think baby needs his DD changed. This will be a good time to try out the cloth diapers I ordered. Mom lifted the tray of the high chair and took me to the nursery. It was very hard to walk with a loaded diaper. She helped me onto the changing table and then cleaned me up and showed me the cloth diaper. Now it might be hard at first to walk in these, so just crawl till we can teach you how to walk, or should I say waddle. 
I looked at it and it was very thick, mom lifted my backside and slid the cloth under me then pinned it tightly in place with four diaper pins. I guess this was to make sure that the diaper's thickness was felt at all times. Then she pulled a baby-style print pair of rubber pants on me. Now it was only about 8 o'clock now but she got out a pair of blanket sleepers saying that it was baby's bedtime soon. But first mom said that dad was going to talk to me more about what was expected of me in the coming months. Chapter 4 The Talk Mom finished getting me dressed for bed and then got me off the table. And she was right. The diaper was so thick that I could not get my knees closer together than about 4 inches. So this meant I would have a very hard time walking so mom said for me to crawl. Mom said to follow her into the living room so I crawled behind her. As I entered the room I noticed that there was now a large playpen in the corner of the room. Mom led me over to it and helped me into the playpen. It was filled with baby toys and stuffed animals. Dad asked me if I had any questions about all this and warned me that if I yelled or lost my temper that I would be punished. So I calmly asked what happens if any of my friends happen to come over. He said well depending if you are good or bad that day, I will let them in. I asked will I be dressed like this or would I be allowed to wear regular clothes. He said that also depends on whether you behave or not. I will say this thou, if you are good then yes you will be able to wear big kid clothes, but you will be in diapers no matter what. And if I am bad? He said then you will see your friends in the outfit you have on at the time. I then asked why am I being forced to use the diapers. He said because you are a baby, babies do not use the bathroom like big kids do. And don't worry my dear our friend has prescribed you some harmless medications that will help you use them without thinking about it, just like a real baby. I asked what happens if I do behave and become a teen again, will I be in diapers forever? He said no, the medicines have no permeate effect on your control, all we will have to do is repotty train you. I just looked down at the diaper, thinking to myself that I had to make all this end. He spoke up saying, do you have anything else you wish to say, keep in mind that when you wake up tomorrow, it's nothing but baby talk. No dad I just want all this to end, please don't make me go through this, I will improve I promise. No baby, I can't trust you now. You must prove to both me and your mother that you have improved. Now just behave and this will all be over soon. That is when I screamed out, I hate you both. That was a big mistake. Dad grabbed me in the pacifier, strapped back in my mouth saying, you will wear this for one day and I am going to spank you. He turned me over his knee and removed my diaper, then gave me ten very hard swats on my rear turning it pink. My crying and screaming was very muffled by the pacifier, so all anyone heard was the slapping of dad's hand on my rear. After he was done he re me and told mom to get the medications. He said get all three of them, the one to make him wet, the one for pooping and the one for sleeping. Now I did not notice but the pacifier had a hole in the middle of it, I thought it was a air hole but it could also be used to feed me, mom came back with a tube and liquid bag full of what looked like water. The tube was hooked to the end of my pacifier and then to the bag. I had no choice but to drink all the liquid as it came into my mouth. After it was all in me dad carried me to the nursery and laid me into the crib. I fell asleep almost right away. Chapter 5 The First Morning I awoke in the nursery, in a crib wearing footed sleepers and a very wet and messy diaper. My god it wasn't all a bad dream, this is really happening. That is all I could think about while laying there gagged and diapered. After what seemed like a hour's mom came into the room to check on me and started talking to me like I was a baby. Saying, ah oh, there is my little baby, did my snookum sleep good? Then she unzipped my sleeper and stuck her finger in my diaper, oh poor baby is all wet aren't you? She lifted me up and then said, oh my and someone has stinky pants too. So it was off to the changing table so I could be changed and dressed for my first full day as a baby again. I was cleaned and powdered then dressed in a blue romper and onsi. Mom had me get back into the crib so that I could be given my medication and fed. Good I thought, perhaps after I am forced to take the medication I can get a break from this pacifier. 
that was not to be the case. Mom went to the kitchen to get the medication bag and something new that she called the feeding bag, saying that this is how bad babies get fed from now on. She also reminded me that the pacifier would not be taken off till tomorrow morning, only if I behave. The tube was hooked up to my pacifier and then to the first bag containing the medication. After I finished the med bag the tube was then hooked up to the feeding bag, which contained baby formula. To be perfectly honest I cannot understand how babies can drink that stuff, it was the worst tasting thing I have ever had. I had little choice in the matter though, so I finished it as quickly as I could. After I had my breakfast mom said that she was going to bring me to the living room so that she could finish cleaning. She had me crawl behind her then she helped me into the playpen. She said, now be a good snookums and play nice for mommy, then she turned on the TV and it was tuned to Blue's Clues. All the while I am thinking to myself, is this really happening? I just sat there trying real hard not to pay attention to the TV, mom came into the room and saw this and said, if you do not start acting and playing like a baby then this punishment will go on for a very long time. Hearing this I picked up some blocks and started to play with them just so she would leave me alone. She seemed satisfied and left the room. Then something strange happened, I absent-mindedly started to not only play with the blocks and other toys in the playpen, but also started to enjoy it. All of a sudden I felt something warm and wet in the front of my diaper, I had wet it without thinking about it. I got scared, what is in those drugs anyway? I heard mom coming so I started to play again, without saying a word she came over and checked my diaper. Feeling that it was wet, she just walked away and went on with her cleaning. I must have fallen asleep cause the next thing I remember is hearing the doorbell. I got real worried that it might be Jimmy or Dan. Mom went to the door and talked to whoever it was for about a minute then came to the living room with a box. Knew it was just the mail. Mom seemed excited about something, this also had me worried. Mommy has got a big surprise for her little snookums. She opened the package and pulled out something that looked like a seeing eye dog would wear, a harness of some sort. This is for you snookums, it's a baby harness so that mommy's baby won't try to wander off. I was horrified, she also explained that it was to keep me from trying to remove my diaper or clothes. There was one more thing that she pulled out of the box. It was a pair of mittens, but these had locks on the wrist, she went on to explain that with these on I would not be able to do much with my hands, just like a baby. All I would be able to do is hold my bottle and play with a few toys. I don't know what came over me but I started to cry. So mom took that as I needed to either eat or be changed. She said, I have her idea, let's get mommy's snookums a new diaper and try on baby's new stuff. Chapter 6 New Editions Mom changed me and fitted the harness on me making sure that it was on tight and that I would not soon forget I was wearing it. The harness was pink of all colours and had mommy snookums embroidered on this oval part on my chest and it had a teddy bear in the middle. It went around my chest then over my shoulders for the top part, then it had a crotch part that joined it up in the back with a lock on it where it met. In other words it was not coming off, then she put the mittens on which made the situation at that point, hopeless to me that I could ever escape all this and that I better just go along with it and maybe it would all end soon. Mom said that I had slept through lunch time and that it was almost dinner time. So all I was gonna be fed was a sum formula and my medicines. Once again I am in the crib and the tube is hooked up. I finished the medicines and started on the formula, I was then told that the reason the formula tasted so bad was cause it was to remind me of what bad babies get. Dad came home from work and came into the nursery just as I was finishing up. He bent over the crib and kissed my cheek just like as if I really was a two year old again. It was not just a small unfeeling peck, it was with love that a father has for his son. This made me feel somewhat better. He was admiring the mittens and harness when he asked mom if I had been a good baby today or not. Mom replied, well I did have to remind him about how to act, but I would say he earned the right to speak again. Dad looked at me and said, okay baby I am gonna take out the pacifier but remember that if you wish to talk to your mother or me, it must be in baby talk. Am I clear on this baby? I nodded yes, 
then he removed my pacifier. He pointed to mom and asked me who that was, I said. Mommy, in the most babyish voice I could use. Then he pointed to himself and asked the same question, Daddy I said. Good baby he replied. He then asked mom if I have eaten, she said that I just did and was given my medicines. Good he said, then he sniffed in the air and looked at me. I think baby needs a bath don't you agree dear? Mom said, yes I do honey. Now I really did not have any idea what was going to happen next but it was just one more part of what was quickly becoming the most humiliating time in my life. I was led crawling to the bathroom and then undressed by mom. There I was standing stark naked when she got out shaving cream and a razor. Now being 15 I will admit I was somewhat of a early bloomer with hair on my legs and some in my private area. This would not last long, mom coated my privates and legs with shaving cream and then started to shave me. Saying that babies don't have hair like this. She also said that I will be kept clean shaven until I can grow up. After I was shaven mom told me to get in the tub. Then I was washed by my mother like I really was too again. Mom also added that I will be given a bath every night before or after dinner. After she was done washing me she took me back to the nursery to dress me for dinner. She said that dad and her were gonna watch a movie so she was gonna double diaper me so that I would not interrupt them with me having to be changed. She lifted me up and slid both diapers under me and then pinned them tightly on me, then came a big pair of rubber pants. After I was diapered she just put a t-shirt on me then the harness and mittens. Crawling was even hard to do being diapered like this. Mom led me to the kitchen for dinner. Chapter 7 Bedtime Mom put me in my high chair and gave me a bottle of grape juice to drink. I was just happy that it was not that awful formula again. I saw Dad cooking tacos my favorite meal, but I know that I was not going to be fed that. Instead I was to be fed strained peas, strained meat and applesauce. Mom took my half-gone bottle away and began to feed me the baby food. After I was done being fed, Mom took me out of the high chair and into the living room where I was put in my playpen while she and Dad ate their dinner. Mom gave me my bottle and said to play nice while Mommy and Daddy ate. Mom and Dad came into the room after 30 or so minutes, turned on the TV and started to watch their movie. I just did what was expected of me and tried to keep myself occupied by playing with the blocks in my playpen. The medicines that were given to me were working very well, I wet my diaper three times and each time I did not know it till I felt the warm wet felling of my diaper. I also messed my diaper which also I did not know happened till I felt a squishy feeling in the rear of my diaper. Only this time it did not feel all that bad. I guess I am getting used to this already, sigh. Well after two and a half hours I was soaked and had a full load in the rear of my diaper. Mom and Dad came over and complimented me for being such a good baby boy and then smelled what was in my rear and they both smiled. Or oh, poor Snookums, we better get the baby cleaned up and into bed, he needs his sleep. Dad picked me up and carried me to the nursery in his arms as if I was two. He set me down on the changing table then Mom went to pick out what I was going to wear to bed. She picked out a pair of blue blanket sleepers with matching rubber pants. She then took off my wet and messy diaper, cleaned me up, used some baby location on my rear then sprinkled baby powder all over my rear and privates. Then pinned me into a new diaper, put me in the rubber pants then dressed me in the sleeper. Then dad picked me up and laid me in the crib, mom and dad were just standing there looking at their 15-year-old son who was now dressed like a two-year-old toddler. Dad said, we both love you very much baby, that is the real reason that we are doing this. I said back to them, I love you too mommy and daddy, in a babyish voice. They both kissed my cheek then turned off the light and closed the door. I laid awake thinking about what dad said, could it be true what he said? It's the reason that they have regressed me is because they truly care about me and not that they hate me and somehow get off on humiliating me. Then I drifted off to sleep. Chapter 8 The Visit after a few weeks of being mom and dad's baby again I can honestly say that if I am allowed to grow up that I will behave to make sure that this does not happen again. Although I cannot say that I truly hate being treated like this, 
but I do miss being a teen and being with my friends. I woke up one Saturday morning and both mom and dad were there to greet me as I opened my eyes. Mom said, well good morning Snookums, daddy and I have a big surprise for you today. You have been such a good boy that we have decided to let you be a teen boy for today. My eyes went wide, I was so excited. She went on to say, also we are inviting Dan and Jimmy to come over. Now I was in shock, but as I was to find out later, something a lot more shocking was waiting for me. Dad spoke, but you will still be in diapers, you may wear big boy clothes but the diapers stay on, and you may talk like a big boy as well today. I smiled and said, thank you mommy and daddy. Well I guess that I was doing good after all and that maybe this was gonna end soon, I was not thrilled that I was to be diapered as always, but at least I was going to be seeing Dan and Jimmy again. Dad lifted me up and put me on the changing table, then mom undressed me and changed my diaper. I then asked, what happens if I need a diaper change while Dan and Jimmy are here? Mom said not to worry about that, all you have to do is come up to me or dad for a diaper check and we will change you. I asked, but what if my friends find out about this? Mom said not to worry and they won't know unless I tell them. With that mom did something that she has not done since this all started, she put me into a disposable diaper. She did this saying, this will help you be able to walk better and then she put on rubber pants that muffles out the crinkle noise that disposables make. Then she said go to your big boy room and get dressed, you may wear whatever you want and you may talk like a big boy now. I said thanks mom and then went to my old room. I put on the thickest shorts I had in the hopes of concealing the bulk of the diaper and a shirt. I went to the kitchen and dad was cooking my favorite breakfast, ham and cheese omelets. I went over to him and said thank you for rewarding me like this. He said you have earned it son. I noticed that the high chair was gone and my regular chair was in its place. I smiled and sat down, then breakfast was served and I was able for the first time in three weeks to eat without being fed. After breakfast I offered to help mom with the dishes. I could see that mom and dad were a bit surprised by this. Me and mom were just finishing up when the doorbell rang. It was Dan and Jimmy, mom let them in, I saw them hand mom backpacks and for the life of me could not figure out why, but I didn't ask, I was just so happy that they were here. All three of us went to my room to talk and catch up. Dan and Jimmy were acting a bit strange so I asked them what was wrong and why did they leave their backpacks with my mom. Dan spoke up, those are me and Jimmy's diaper bags. I almost passed out, I was all like, say that again, he goes yeah, why are you being treated like a baby, our parents were doing the same to us. With that they both took down their shorts to prove it, and sure enough they were diapered just like I was. I was relived a little, so instead of talking about girls or what new movies that we have seen, we talked about what our parents were doing to us. I had to ask how they felt about what was happening to us and they both seemed to agree that in some respects that they liked it. Just then a familiar smell overcame the room and we all looked at each other, Dan turned red and said that he needed to be changed, Jimmy and I just giggled. Not in a demeaning manner but because that we both knew that our time for that would come soon as well. Dan went to mom and she led him to my nursery and got him cleaned up and in a new diaper. After a few hours of us just being normal teens except for we were all in diapers, it was time for them to home. We said our goodbyes and mom said that she would make sure that she told Dan and Jimmy's parents what perfect angels they were. With that they went home. Chapter 9A Playdate A week went by after I got to see Jimmy and Dan. I was back to cloth diapers and being baby when mom and dad said that all three of us babies have been doing so good that we have earned a baby playdate. I was excited but also baffled, what did they mean by a baby playdate? I was soon to find out. Dad lifted me out of he crib and onto my changing table. Dad said that he was going to change me this morning instead of mom. I smiled like a baby boy would and let him continue. He removed my very wet diaper and cleaned me up very good. Then he said to lay still and went to the other room, he came back a minute or so later with what looked like a hot water bag with a tube on the end of it. I asked what it was saying, what that daddy? 
He said, it's an enema baby, mommy and I want to make sure that you don't poop while your baby friends are here, so I am gonna clean out your rear with this. I looked scared, but he said just relax baby, Jimmy and Dan are being given the same thing. With that he took out some baby scented Vaseline and coated the nozzle and then gave my rear a good coating as well. Then he slowly slid the nozzle into my rear and I cringed, he once again said to try very hard to relax and that it would soon be over. After he was sure that it was in all the way, he opened the valve and warm soapy water began to fill my bowels. It was the worst feeling and most humiliating feeling I have had since the first time mom diapered me. I was begging and crying for dad to stop and that it hurt so much, but he said that we were almost done. I thought I was gonna explode, then it was over, before I knew it, I was diapered and dad was putting on my rubber pants. Dad said to just let it go into the diaper and he would be back soon to change me and get me ready for the day, he lifted me off the table and into my crib, then left. I was still crying, but it did not take long before all two quarts was flooding my diaper. That is when I really started crying, mom and dad came to my room and started cooing and trying to calm me down. Dad carefully lifted me out of the crib and back onto the changing table. Mom then changed and cleaned me up real good. Mom said that she had a very special outfit picked out for me today. It was a sailor suit style romper with a cute little matching hat. Complete with saddle shoes in my size. The romper even had snaps in the crotch just like a baby's romper would. Mom got me into my outfit and said that if I wanted to I could try waddling instead of crawling all the time. Dad set me on the floor and it was like I was taking my first steps all over again. It was hard at first but with a little practice, I was doing just great. I waddled into the kitchen and Dad helped me into my high chair. But instead of being given a bottle, I was given a sippy cup and baby silverware. They explained that I have earned the right to feed myself a little. I smiled and started to eat my baby cereal like it was the best thing I have ever tasted. After breakfast was over I was led waddling to my playpen to wait for my friends to come over. The wait was not long and Jimmy, Dan and their moms and dads showed up. Jimmy and Dan were placed in the playpen with me, we were told to play nice and to remember, we were to talk, act, and play like babes. We all shook our heads yes and started to play and have fun. The adults went to the kitchen to have coffee and talk. I quietly asked Jimmy and Dan in baby talk if they were given the enema this morning like I was given. They both said yes and I could tell they had the same feelings about it as I did. Just then I felt myself being lifted out of the playpen and turned over my dad's knee, I was given three good swats on my rear for not talking about baby things and then he said that if I continued, I would be given my pacifier. The three of us started playing with my blocks and were having a lot of fun just being babes without a care in the world. We saw some flashes of light and then turned around to see our dads taking pictures of us. Our moms were just cooing and saying how cute the three of us looked. Then Jimmy's dad spoke up and said, Today is the last day of you kids to be babies, tomorrow you all start potty training and will be moved up in age and privileges. You will be treated as preteens of age 10. Keep in mind that if you misbehave or show signs of returning to being like you were before your second babyhood, you will be returned to diapers and babies, no matter if school has started. Dan's dad spoke up, if you are to be babies again at school, the same rules of your diapers will apply, only an adult may change your diapers and you will use them for everything. We already have the notes to the school nurse written up. My dad spoke up, do you understand what we are saying children? We all nodded yes. Chapter 10 Potty Training I woke up the next morning and mom is standing there waiting for me, wake up snookums, today is a big day for you. Mom reminded me that it was the medication that was making me pee and poop without thinking so she was gonna take me off the pooping one first and after a week or so and I could prove that I could poop on the potty like a big boy, she would then take me off the one for wetting. But I was to remain in diapers for the whole time, just in case. So mom put me in a diaper and rubber pants as always and I was instructed to tell mommy or daddy if I had to poop. The week went on with only a few accidents during the early part of the week. I had control back of my bowels and was very happy, 
never did get used to the idea of pooping, yuck. But as I would soon discover, wetting would be my problem. The medication did something to me that did not allow me to relearn control completely. I had little control when I was awake, but none at bedtime. I was now a helpless bedwetter. Mom and Dad were very sorry about this and I could see that they were more upset by this than I was. I thought at first that I would be extremely upset, but I wasn't, in fact I had grown to like being cared for by Mom and Dad. So I explained that to them and that I had no problem with being diapered at night, as long as I was put in them by Mom or Dad. They smiled and said are you sure son? We could go back to the doctor and see if there is some kind of treatment for this. I said that I was sure. I hugged mom and dad and said I love you very much and thank you for helping me learn to behave. I just want to make you proud. Mom started to tear a little and dad just got up and said, well son there is still a month of your vacation left. You have proved to us that you can behave like a good upstanding young man. So I am lifting your grounding and you may do whatever you want. Only rule is, be home by 10pm for your diapering. I agreed and said thank you daddy, he stopped me and said, you don't have to call me that anymore dad will be fine. I asked, do I still have to wear diapers during the day now dad? He said that it was up to me. So till school started I chose to stay diapered most of the time till I was sure that I had at least some daytime control, plus, I have to admit, I liked being diapered and continued to be that way on weekends and during time off of school. Mom and Dad kept the nursery and would baby me as a reward, and not as a punishment. But it would be if I ever misbehaved again, I have learned that there is a big difference in wanting to be babied and being forced to be babied. I just hope I don't have to find out how much of a difference. As for Jimmy and Dan, they too had to be diapered at night but poor Jimmy never got back his control of wetting and was in diapers all the time. We all became better friends than ever and would still have our baby playdates at least once a week.